We're going down to IndyCar, Kyle, as uh, you know, a guy that was very much in the F2 championship last season. Callum Eilat will drive for Juncos, Hollinger Racing in the number 77 for the three remaining races. He was going to be running already Portland this upcoming weekend. IndyCar kicking off their triple header consecutive finale here in a wild championship battle coming down to the end of this on the West Coast. Um, but Callum Eilat, he's going to be sticking around for three races here. Maybe this is something that they looked for in 2022 as a full-time thing because it doesn't seem like there's any F1 seat really available for him next season. He hasn't really been at the top of the list in terms of that Alfa Romeo seat. That's the only one left available, it seems, for next season. So it makes a lot of sense that he's dipping his toes in here in IndyCar and seeing what he can accomplish here in, the, in a short-term experiment. And then maybe he signed something up for 2022 in more of a part-time or full-time capacity. But your thoughts on Callum Mylock here, here getting a shot in the number 77 here, starting off with Portland and then uh, continuing on for the remainder of the season. Yeah, this is this is one that I'm super excited about. Um, I'm a big fan of Callum Eilat. Um, I, I think he's been, as you kind of mentioned, forgotten a little bit in, in the uh, Formula One silly season of things. Um, decided not to go back to Formula Two last year, which um, I think it, it is probably the right decision. Um, go and do the testing stuff with Alfa Romeo. Do some of the other uh, uh, GT racing and stuff that he's done this year. Um, he he kind of did what he needed to do in formula two he had his rookie season was decent there in 2020 he won a handful of races finished second in the championship had a very very strong season um was very close to mick schumacher in in that championship battle didn't end up getting that f1 seat lost out on it uh presumably to nikita mazepin there and then surprisingly um did not get kind of the seat that antonio giovinazzi was uh keeping for the ferrari seat that the alfa romeo relationship yeah. had um goes to alfa romeo as the test driver and has done some some pretty solid stuff in in the free practice sessions that he has gotten but Again, when we look at the silly season and how things have played out, specifically with that Alfa Romeo seat, we know Bottas is getting one of those. And then there's like six different names that we've heard with that second seat. And Callum Ayla is one of the last ones being mentioned. It really does seem like that seat's going to go to like a Guan Yu Zhou who brings a bunch of money or somebody else kind of in that DeVries similar maybe. vein, Nick DeVries coming over from Formula E. Like there's a couple of different names in there that seem like they have a more likely chance than, than Callum Ayla. And so still has those Ferrari ties. Um, still could potentially do something over there uh, at some point, but to have Hunko's Hollinger Racing kind of come back here in 2021, the last time we saw them was out at Indy when they were bumping Fernando Alonso from the field for crying out loud with Kyle Kaiser. They've run a handful of races previous to that as well, but they want to go full-time into next season. And that starts with these three races at the end of the season. And Calamila is a great great guy to come um, and, and see what he's got in, in an Indy car. We saw what Christian Lungard was able to do in short say, time yeah. with Ray Hall Letterman Lanigan. Of course, you would assume that that car is much better than a Hunko's car would be, but Callum Eilat has a ton, a ton of potential. Um, and I'm excited to see what he can do over here. I, whether that means Indy car is a realistic possibility for him into next year. Well, I don't think Hunko's would be giving him all three seats uh, or all three races uh, at the end of the season, if they didn't think that he was a possibility to go full-time with them next year, I do think that he's still at least in the conversation for the Alfa Romeo seat. I do think he's in that conversation for some of the Ferrari hypercar stuff, but at least for next season and the end of this season, Callum Ayolat with Hunkos is going to be a very, very exciting prospect and really excited to see what he can do at Portland. And then the final two races after that as well. It's huge for him to get some seat time here, just to keep it, he keep his feet in, in the, in the realm of, uh, of getting a seat for, for next season, whether that's, you know, with the hypercar program, like you said, or IndyCar, I think that would be a very good addition to IndyCar's lineup in terms of young talent that have come over from overseas. And, um, Callum Allard is somebody that I think, yeah, like you said, has got lost in the shuffle here. And it's crazy to think how one season can really change that, whether you, you're just not an F2 and you kind of get a little bit thrown under the rug a little bit and, and swept away and, and forgotten to an extent. I'm sure he hasn't, but he's not at the top of the list compared to what the rumors were last season. It was very much either Callum Eilat or Mick Schumacher to get maybe an Alfa Romeo mm -hmm. seat. They didn't end up doing that. So then Schumacher got the Haas seat and then Mazepin obviously got that second one. And then that Mick Schumacher rumor, of maybe going to that second Alfa Romeo seat next season has kind of been shut down as well. He's going to be staying at Haas. And then they're just looking to fill that one Alfa Romeo seat. That's the last one on the F1 grid for next season that is currently vacant. So 
Lots of different things to consider for Alfa Romeo, but for Callum Island, this is a smart decision to keep your options open. See if something works here overseas, see what you can do. Just get the car home in one piece, try and do the best you can. It's going to be a little bit of a learning curve, but we saw that Christian Lingard took to it very nicely. The race pace wasn't quite there on the, uh, on the Saturday there, but in qualifying, he was fantastic. He was top five speeds. It seems on one lap pace. So maybe Calamila can do something similar with getting inside that top 15 on one lap pace and uh, given the equipment.